My name is Adam and I'm joined today by uh, Andrew Priest, who is a nuclear physicist and deals on a day-to-day -day basis with radiation or lack thereof, hopefully. I wanted to quickly ask Andrew about, about radiation generally because 5G is what everyone is talking about in the news at the minute because there's a lot of, uh, uh, there seems to be a lot of public fear around uh, uh, the safety of it and, and possible radiation poisoning. Andrew, what, uh, so 5G uses microwaves, right? 5G is more, has a higher frequency and so is closer to gamma rays than 4G and 3G and 2G and radio waves, right? So, uh, doesn't that mean that it's more dangerous? Uh, well, firstly, I would just like to say at the outset um, uh, that I'm not speaking on behalf of ONR here, no. my employer, because uh, that's not an area that they deal with. This is just sort of my general knowledge as a physicist. Um, but uh, um, in terms of the radio, basically the electromagnetic spectrum, which is what we're talking about here, consists of... Uh, various types of radiation, some that people will be quite familiar with, others not so familiar. So essentially, it, uh, the different types of radiation uh, go up in terms of energy. So starting at the bottom end of the scale, you've got things like radio waves, which transmit radio signals that we're all familiar with, um, uh, and TV and so on, depends on that kind of uh, wave. And then um, moving up through the spectrum, you move up then to microwaves, and uh, we're familiar with those, for example, from microwave ovens. Also, our mobile phones uh, and, and computers, Wi-Fi and so on, use microwaves. Um, and then moving up beyond that, you have infrared, um, which is uh, um, uh, heat, basically. And, and so you may have seen on television, uh, sometimes people like um, the army use infrared uh, cameras that can see detect people's bodies in, in the dark, you know, because they can see the heat coming off, basically. Because humans are giving off that infrared radiation. We're giving off heat all the time. And, and so we, if you've got the right, I mean, our eyes can't see that infrared radiation. It's beyond what our eyes can see. But um, with the right sort of equipment, you can detect it. Um, and then moving up the energy spectrum from infrared, um, you get an instantly infrared is how the heat of the sun reaches us. So. The, uh, basically between us and the sun is space, which is basically a vacuum. Um, and the way that the, the heat of the sun reaches us is by infrared radiation, which travels through space, comes to the earth and warms us up. Um, so that's infrared. And then you get visible light, which of course also comes to us from the sun. Uh, and visible light is, the, as it suggests, it's the light that our eyes can see. Um, uh, and the, the colours of the rainbow. Uh, that, and incidentally, the, the colours also correspond to different energy levels. So the, at the lower energy, energy level, you have red light, where, and just below that, of course, is infrared, which we just mentioned. And then going up through the spectrum, you get red, orange. I mean, there's an infinite range of colours, really, but we often speak of the seven colours of the rainbow. So you get red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And then violet is at the high energy end of the spectrum. That's the mo where a, a limit of our vision goes. And then beyond violet, which we can't see, you have the ultraviolet. And the ultraviolet is what gives us sunburn and suntans. Okay, so that um, one is dangerous. Well, it's, yeah. It can be, yes. I mean, there's, they divide ultraviolet into UVA and UVB. So the UVA, is actually in in as long as it's in moderate doses that is actually good for you because it for example it helps your body to produce vitamin d mm. um so and and we get that from the sun um so uva is is okay uvb is 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 a bit more energetic and can be harmful if you get too much of it uh can can ultimately lead to things like skin cancer. So it initially it might give you sunburn. That's because uh, it breaks up DNA, right? And, and moves. Uh, yeah, so it, it, will, it will damage your body cells and, and, um, and ultimately can lead to cancer. And then beyond ultraviolet, you get x-rays, which of course are used in hospitals for seeing, you know, getting images of your bones and so on. And then beyond that, you have gamma rays, which are, gamma rays are particularly emitted in nuclear reactions. And they're very spicy. And, and they're, and they're like, high energy and they are hazardous and, and that's one of the areas that the nuclear industry has to deal with and to make sure we protect people from the hazards of, of gamma rays.
Okay, so your microwave oven, you wouldn't want to sit inside a microwave oven because it would make you really hot. Yes. <laughs> and, and so, and all microwave energy, um, if it's when it touches you, creates heat. Is that right? Yes. So um, it, uh, it, with all of these different types of radiation, the, uh, as well as the, the energy of the individual ray, so the individual particles of radiation referred to as photons, each photon has a certain energy, and that's what I've just described in that spectrum. So low energy photons are um, radio waves, high energy gamma rays, um, visible light somewhere in the middle. Um, but with the microwaves, um, the individual photons are relatively low energy. Um, and as a result, they're not particularly, well, they're not harmful in, at an individual level. But if you have a large number of those photons, so what we call high intensity radiation, so like having a bright light shone on, a bit like a laser beam can, can burn you or could blind you, um, that's a high intensity visible light from a laser beam. In the same way, high intensity microwave radiation uh, makes things hot. Uh, and it, it can heat things up and um, could, could lead to burns and so on. Uh, and within a microwave oven, um, the, the radiation that's released there, it's, it's, not, it's a little more subtle than just the intensity because certain wavelengths or frequencies of radiation interact with certain particles. So water, for example, will absorb, uh, readily absorb the, the microwaves that are emitted within a microwave oven and that causes the water to heat up. And of course, a lot of our food, including our bodies as well, contains water. So when you put food into a microwave oven, what happens is that particularly the water in the food will absorb the microwaves because they're at the right frequency to do that. And um, that will cause the water within the food to heat up and eventually the food itself heats up. Does that mean then that, uh, that if you could somehow turn your Wi-Fi router up high enough, you could, uh, you could boil water with, or you'd be able to feel heat from it, from afar, from a foot away? Uh, well, of course, the, the oven itself is designed to shield you from that radiation. Mm. So, so you can stand right next to a microwave oven and it won't do you any harm because it's got shielding around it to protect you. But um, if you, you know, well, if you were able to put your hand in while it was operating, for example, then obviously your hand would heat up and eventually would suffer burns if, if it was left there long enough. Um, so, so yes, um, it, you know, microwaves can heat things up if, the, it, as I say, um, in, in the right circumstances. Um, but to, just to put that in context, um, the sort of microwaves that you get from, say, your computer Wi-Fi. So your computer at home will operate on micro the, the Wi-Fi um, communication will be via microwaves. And um, the energy, uh, the intensity of those, mi uh, of those microwaves from a typical computer Wi-Fi connection is something like a factor of 50,000 below the safe limit. So in other words, there are recognized safe limits for radiation. Uh, and, and if you go above those limits, then you, you, you can cause harm, mainly, as I say, through overheating and burns. Um, but in a typical, as I say, computer, for example, it's, yeah. it's a factor of 50,000 below that level. So you would never even be able to feel that, would you? Even, even if no, it was no you, you, you wouldn't feel it. And so, and, uh, and when you're talking about heat, that's just, that's not like a, like, it's not like a Chernobyl or Hiroshima, like that, that is literally just like, as in, you know, you hold someone's hand and you feel warmth there. That would be, that's that sort of heat. Well, yes. I mean, obviously it depends. So it, uh, going back to the microwave oven as an example, it, you know, if you put something in for a short time, um, it will heat up a little bit. Yeah. If you put it in for longer, it will heat up more. Um, and, and, and likewise, if you put in more, you know, if you had a more powerful oven, mm -hmm. it will heat up more. Um, so in, it's all about quantity really here. And obviously the, the more microwaves you have and the more you heat something up, then the higher the temperature will go. But that means that because if it's not using, if it's using something familiar like heat, if the, if the safety concerns are around, uh, around heat, then um, that's something we're familiar with. And so we can be like, hey, it's the 20th of December. 
uh, I'm standing around this area with all these Wi-Fi, or with all these uh, 5G towers, and I've got my phone on, and I've got my LifeX bulbs in my house, and I feel too warm, that, um, you know, you'd be like, actually, I can detect that I'm getting too much <laughs> uh, yes. 5G radiation. Yeah, um, that, I mean, and certainly if, if it was just, if it was a sort of moderately high amount of radiation that you were getting, you would warm up slowly and you would feel that and you'd think, oh, it's a bit hot here, I'm gonna move over there, you know, sort of thing. So, so at a moderate level, it probably wouldn't do you any harm because as soon as you started to heat up, you'd feel it and you'd move away. Um, but obviously if it was a very high powered source, then it could heat you up very quickly. And that's when you, you'd start to get injuries, burns and so on. 5G is less, is less energetic though than 4G, isn't it? And then there's less, the power source uh, is lower. Well, it, it depends. This is where it gets a bit more technical and subtle and, and where I should add, I'm by no means an expert, but I can give you a few broad points on it. Um, but for example, obviously if you're right next to a, a, a tower that transmits um, microwaves for 4G or 5G, then right next to that, the radiation levels could be significant. Um, you might but, feel warm. Uh, well, you, you could feel warm, certainly, if you were right next to it. But um, that said, the part that they will design is in such a way as to make it safe. So, for example, um, the transmitter will be at the top of the tower, and they make the tower high enough that someone standing at the bottom wouldn't suffer ill effects. Mm. So in other words, if you were right next to the transmitter at the top, you might suffer some ill effects. But so long as you're just standing at the bottom on the ground, then you're not going And of course, they probably put a fence around it to stop anyone climbing up it or anything like that. But, just, um, but I think it's important to, to realize that light bulbs do the same thing. This essentially is a, is, is a light bulb that is a lot less, has a less has less radiation, <laughs> has a lower yeah. frequency than a light bulb, yeah. isn't it? So of it is a lower frequency than a light bulb, yeah. Um, and but light bulbs in print, can heat you up. Light bulbs can heat you up, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, the, I mean, the principle, yes, is, is very much as you, similar as you said. Um, I mean, it's all electromagnetic radiation. It all travels at the speed of light. Um, but the, what differs is the wavelength, the frequency, and the energy of the photons. Um, it feels like this uh, the like we're so familiar with light bulbs and i've got studio lights in here and they're and i feel very warm because of them i guess that's because infrared energy is hitting me and yes. uh, and and visible light as well uh, is is warming me up and but so if they were if i if those light bulbs were just microwave uh, light bulbs I'm not sure yes. what that's a, what, like, uh, a microwave transmitter. Uh, the same thing would be happening, but I probably wouldn't be able to feel it, would I? Because they would be uh, less. No, unless it, unless it was a very powerful transmitter, in, in which case, say, you'd start to heat up and you would feel that. Mm -hmm. But if it's just a sort of low level one, you, they would just you wouldn't feel that you wouldn't feel it at all. No. So this the so the sun is giving off microwaves. I, I suppose uh, yes. Um, the, 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 all star. If you study st when the astronomers study stars, they can use different types of mm. telescope to study the stars. And so, for example, they have radio telescopes, and they pick up the radio waves that stars emit, including the sun. Um, or they can look at visible light, which is what we're most familiar with, and, and take photographs of stars and, and the sun and so on. Um, or they can look at infrared radiation. Uh, or x-rays. Um, so provided you've got the right kind of telescope and the right kind of detectors, you can detect all sorts of radiation coming off stars in general and, and including the sun. But if the sun is giving off microwaves, um, then surely uh, you, you, I presume that's a much higher amount of microwaves hitting the earth than we will be making with, with a 5G tower on, on every corner. Yes, obviously, in its totality, the sun will give off a, a lot more uh, microwaves than any 5G device. Not, nothing to worry about. And actually, the sun does heat things up quite effectively, I've noticed. Oh, um, oh yeah, definitely. That, and, and of course, that's why, that's why solar energy works. That's where so solar panels get their energy. Okay, that's cool. I, uh, we went way over our six minutes, but <laughs> thank you very, very much for this. This, is, uh, I, this has been really great. This is Andrew Priest, a, a radiation physicists.
amongst other things. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, I've learned a lot today. That's brilliant. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Adam. <laughs>